We've all run into a situation in life when we assume we're doing a great job, but it turns out we're a complete failure. Think you know how to put away the dishes? Just wait till you get married. You'll never realize how wrong you were. At work, maybe you thought you used the right word in a conversation with your boss. Turns out your vocab isn't as tight as you had hoped. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. We all get burned by our overconfidence at one point in our lives. Trust me, I've been there. For our country, unfortunately, we have a delusional leader that actually thinks he's doing a great job for America. Listen. Under my plan for the economy, we made extraordinary progress. I don't want to hear any more of these lies about reckless spending. We're changing people's lives. We're delivering the biggest drop in deficit in the history of the United States of America. If by extraordinary progress, he means history breaking records on inflation, gas prices and stock market losses, then have at it, Joe. You've done a great job. Biden said he can't remember a time when the economy was this strong. And I don't doubt him. He probably doesn't remember much. Almost every economic indicator shows we're under pressure. Even CNN and Joe's favorite rating agency, Moody's Analytics, is calling him out. Experts I spoke to still scoffed at the idea that President Biden is personally responsible for having reduced the deficit. And this claim is almost bizarre world, a reversal of reality. Here's what a senior director at Moody's, Dan White, told me last week. He said, the actions of the administration and Congress have undoubtedly resulted in higher deficits, not smaller ones. They brought out the little CNN fact checker out of hiding after he was everywhere during Trump to just crush Joe. That's got to be embarrassing when you're Biden and the CNN fact checker is hunting you down. It's because Joe refuses to accept responsibility for anything. And the lies are nothing new from the big guy. Remember back in January when he was bragging about the record stock run up? The stock market, the last guy's measure of everything, is about 20% higher than it was when my predecessor was there. It has hit record after record after record on my watch. And now those records are gone. The market wiped out all the gains since Joe came into office. Biden came into office with a vaccine handed to him and a recovering economy. Then everybody got COVID, and now the economy's shrinking. And now Joe's donors and big backers, they're starting to feel it. They've seen the gaffes, bad decisions, and poor performance, so they're bailing on Biden way ahead of the next election. Just listen to the New York Times, who broke it down in a piece this weekend. They asked 50 Democrat power brokers if Joe should run again, and they're all saying a big, fat no. So it's official. Operation Joe's Gotta Go has officially begun. Democrat donors aren't going to sit by and watch their portfolios get erased. How do we know this? Because one of the DNC's biggest fundraisers had to be delayed because they can't sell enough tickets. That's right. Kamala Harris was supposed to headline the Women's Leadership Forum on May 25th and 26th. It had to be moved to the fall, though because nobody wanted to go. I mean, would you pay thousands of dollars to listen to Kamala Harris? I mean, I bet people would pay thousands of dollars not to have to listen to Kamala Harris. The big Democrat donors have spoken, and they are done with Joe and Kamala. And it's not just the finance guys that are weary of a Biden second term. The media has started to push Joe out the door. He's a ratings nightmare for the networks and for the cable sect, Fox, of course. Joe Biden is bad for business, so CNN isn't going to sit by as viewers change the channel. They can't do it that much longer. Even Don Lemon got the memo. Does the president have the stamina, physically and mentally, do you think, to continue on even after 2024? Don, you're asking me this question. Oh, my gosh. He's the president of the United States. I, that is not a question that we should be even asking. Just look at the work that he does. Look what he's, how he's delivering uh, for the American public. Look, that, what, that, that, that article that we're talking about is hearsay. It's salacious. That's not what we care about. Did you see the White House press secretary's face right there? She was waiting on a softball from her boy, Don. She could not handle the heat. But Don Lemon didn't let up. CNN's starting to treat the Biden White House like a Republican White House. Watch this. Does the Biden administration bear some responsibility for this? 
So, first of all, um, the American Rescue Plan met the moment, and it has put us in a place where we can actually uh, uh, put us in a place where the American people feel can 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 actually we can take on inflation. What I mean by that is we've see, we've seen growth, right? With eight, as I mentioned, more than eight million jobs, and now we're transitioning into a steady, a stable growth. In order uh, to take this on, we got to have some uh, be in a good historic economic place, which is where we are right now. Oh my God, what? Either Don Lemon got the memo that Biden's getting shown the door in 2024, or he's just really trying to save his own job. Where it is, it shows on the chopping block. So Don could be going to be more fair and balanced. And if CNN goes fair and balanced, it's going to be no good, no bueno for Joe Biden. Corinne Jean-Pierre, which is French for word salad, also ran into another buzzsaw, our very own stupid son of a bitch, Peter Ducey. What is the president's message to somebody who might want to retire, but their 401k is getting wiped out? So we know we know that the, that high prices are having a real effect on people's lives. But we are coming out of the strongest job market in in American history, and that matters. And that a lot of that is thanks to the American Rescue Plan. And it led to uh, this this economic boom, the, the historic economic boom that we're seeing Didn't with it also jobs. Did historic inflation? No, that is no. not. That is that is that is not uh, that is not how we're seeing the American Rescue Plan. <laughs> Rather than fixing our problems. In an ironic twist today that went way over Joe's head, the White House released a statement recognizing World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. <laughs> Nothing could be more perfect than that. And AOC was there to kick the president when he was down. He is saying he's going to run again in 2024. Will you support him? If the president has a vision, and that's something certainly we're all willing to entertain and examine when the, when the time comes. That's not a yes. Yeah, you know, I think uh, we should okay. endorse when we get to it. AOC sounds like the girl you asked the prom, and she's like, well, I was kind of waiting for Mike to ask me, and then if Mike didn't ask me, then, then Brian was going to. But you know what? Let me get back to you. I have finals coming up, so I have to study. And that was really awkward. Even a member of the Democratic National Committee said the quiet part out loud. You don't think that he should run for re-election. How come? It's a host of factors, the first being that the approval rating is not where it should be at this point. Um, but also, more importantly, if you look at the polls with regards to the direction of the country, less mm -hmm. than a quarter of Americans think that our country is on the right track. With polls like that, people are going to be looking for a change candidate. They're not going to be looking to vote for an incumbent with uh, approval ratings down in the 30s. No one wants to back a loser, and the Democrats are no different. And this is where it gets interesting. The Obama team is starting to circle like vultures. David Axelrod told the New York Times that Joe's age would be a major issue if he won again. And that's the opposite of endorsement. Even Joe's former boss, Barack Obama, and his other boss, the former First Lady Michelle, have suddenly reappeared all of a sudden on the scene. On every continent... We are seeing Democratic backslide. I'd love to be able to tell you that everything is as it should be. To stand up here, clear my throat, and say the state of our democracy is strong. But you and I, we all know that I can't say that right now. So their former underling is overseeing a very, very weak U.S. democracy? Hmm. It's kind of a shot. This is very interesting timing. It's almost like they're undermining Joe Biden right out in the open. Did the Democrat power brokers activate the Obamas to save the 2024 election? Because the White House just said Joe's planning on running again. So what's Joe's next move? The man has too much pride to step down. He's a Biden. He thinks he's American royalty. And he's been running for president his entire life. He thinks Trump's the Antichrist, and he actually believes he's the only one who can beat Trump and save America. And a lot of Democrats used to believe that. But I don't even think they believe that anymore. So this is a two-punch combo. Push Joe out the door and smear Trump so badly, or indict him, that he's too wounded to win in 2024. 
Just look at the January 6th hearings, which is basically the third impeachment. The 2024 campaign's already started. The January 6th hearing is just the first dirty attack ad. So here's the pickle. They have to cut loose Biden right after they get sliced open in the midterms, because if he lingers and doesn't make a decision, there's no room for the new Democrat presidential candidates to make moves. They can't start contacting donors. They can't start visiting Iowa and New Hampshire. It'll look really disloyal. And Bernie and Mayor Pete and Warren and Kamala, they are itching to make a run. But they can't be seen as backstabbing the incumbent. So it's all about timing. And this is a quagmire they seem to not be able to get out of. The media doesn't have that problem. They're already floating names. Watch what happened today on The View. But, but I do think there are plenty of, you know, um, Democrats that, that have uh, tons of verve and energy. I mean, I like Gavin Newsom because he's really pretty to look at, and I think he does a great job in California. So if the Democrats want to survive, someone has to convince Joe to hang up his cleats in 2024. But who is going to do it? When the mafia needs to get rid of one of their own, they call in the person closest to you to deliver the hit. So who are the Dems calling in to push Biden aside? Well, we know Hunter's not going to do it. He has too much to gain from Joe being in power. Plus, he needs a pardon. So the responsibility might have to fall on the shadow president, the person behind the whole Biden administration, Susan Rice. Politico just dropped a profile on Rice and how she's really the one running the country right now. It describes her massive portfolio and how she's etched herself into every form of policy from racial justice to international affairs to abortion rights. Plus, senior aides say Biden trusts her more than anyone. It doesn't hurt she's Obama's lieutenant on the inside. Will she be the one to deliver the news? It's going to sting really bad because, remember, Obama told Joe not to run in the first place. He tapped crooked. So with Democrats facing insurmountable odds in both 2022 and in 2024, the party has to make a call on Joe. And it looks like Rice might have to be the one to deliver the message that Joe's got to go. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.